to Real Girl Talk. I am your host, Sherry Ricard. I empower women to stand in their purpose, to succeed despite the odds stacked against them, and to live their life knowing they're enough and worthy. Join me each week for powerful messages and interviews that will inspire you to create the life that you want. Now let's go. Hey guys, thank you for joining me back on Real Girl Talk. I am your host, Sherry Ricard, and I, like always, have a special guest with me today in studio, Lisa Marie Perenio. She is a mom, a wife, a business professional, very talented costume designer, and she is also an actress seen on The First, and she's also been featured in many music videos, Rainy Days by Forever October, Diamonds by Farewell to fear. And she's also got a lot of spots coming up for TV and film that we can't let that cat out of the bag just yet. But I'm talking to her today and to be completely transparent, we are really good friends. So we're going to talk about friendships today, old and new. And Lisa, welcome to the show. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. Good morning, my love. Uh, Okay. So You know, I found this quote, guys, and it's a little controversial to me. It says, make new friends, but don't forget the old. One is silver and the other is gold. And I'm telling you, I don't know if I agree with that quote, because although I have some amazing old friends, and I know Lisa does too, Lisa and I are new friends. And sometimes I think that your new friends can support you just like your old friends. And I also believe that some of your old friends don't necessarily stay in your life because some people come for a reason in a season and some seasons are longer. And Lisa and I are going to be chatting a little bit about old friends and some of the things that have happened in our lives that we really didn't think would happen. And we're going to be talking about new friendships and how making new friends, sometimes you need to just kind of open your heart, right, Lisa? Right. Open your heart and let some of the new people in. And I want to talk about old for just a second. Okay. So I know that you've had some hurtful situations with old friends. Um, I've had some hurtful situations. You know, when my son passed away 12 years ago, I had people that came into my life that I didn't even realize were going to be there for me. And I also had people that left my life that I thought would always be there for me. And yeah, I struggled and I had pain over it, but I realized that sometimes God actually eliminates some things in your life to make room for new. So let's talk a little bit about some of the pains that you've been through and how your old friends have caused that pain and how you've been able to let that go and move on. Right. So, you know, I used to not believe in that. I used to believe that once you're, you're a friend, you're always a friend and friendships right. lives forever. Right. And I was always the kind of friend, uh, I was taught to have good friends, you have to be a good friend. Mm-hmm. So I always tried to be a good friend. I was always there for every event. Um, if they needed me, I mean, I was married. Uh, I've, I've been married. I'm divorced and remarried, but I, I got married at an early age. But I always would put everything on hold for my friends. Right. And if there, and I know that about you. Yes, you do that. I do that. You yeah. know, and it could be a good thing, but it could be a bad thing. You right. Know? So I mean, um, I just always struggled with that because I was always there for everyone. So at mm-hmm. the time when I was going through my divorce, that's when things changed. Um, I lost two good friends Mm. and I couldn't believe it because it was like I was there for their divorces. I was there through everything, you know, with them. And you know how they say misery loves company? Yes. I think that's kind of what it was going on. We had a lot of things in common and and we would, you know, have conversations, um, you know, talk about all all our problems Mm -hmm. and and all that's great. But um, once I became happy, once I got myself out of the situation Mm -hmm. and I started dating and and that, you know, found my, the, my husband that I'm with now. Um, it was like, you know, my two best friends weren't, I, were not happy for me. One mm. just completely stopped doing anything with me. Now, were you couple friends or just, you know, cause sometimes yeah. I think when you go through a divorce and you both, I know, um, my ex, which was, you know, 20 something years ago, um, I've been with Wendell for well, 21 years now, mm-hmm. but I know that my ex and I had couple friends. Mm -hmm. And so you struggle with that a little bit because, 
a lot of times they take sides. Right. So was it right. a couple friend situation or was it where you and your ex had this friend together or no? Well, actually, it, one of my friends was actually my friend first. Okay. And they got to know my husband. And we were all three friends. So there was no significant other anymore in her in, in her life. Well, she mm -hmm. had one. But in, anyway, we weren't like together as couples. Right. Um, what happened was she just stopped doing things with me and kind of started doing things with my ex-husband and mm. his friends. And so that really hurt my feelings. And so when I asked about that and just said, you know, why can't you do lunch with me? You know, now that I'm free and single, I can I have all the time in the world to right. dedicate to, you know, to do some things to you. I'm looking for things to do. And it was just like, no, 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 no. Well, at the time, that's when I was, you know, dating my, my husband that I'm with now, Richie. And, um, you know, she just completely just said, you know, you need to get off your high horse. And that's kind of where we left off. Ooh. And that was many, many years ago. So, you know, the only thing I can make up is that I got happy and she was still maybe in that same place. And maybe that's I think why. some people don't have a horse. That's where that <laughs> saying comes from. Seriously, yeah. you get off your high horse. What's wrong with being on a high horse is because you don't even have a horse. <laughs> right. And so you don't want people to be on their high horse. In other words, you don't want to be happy for anyone. Right. I don't understand, you know, I'm huge about women empowerment and women supporting women. And I think a lot of times it comes down to, you can be so supportive and you are, I mean, mm -hmm. I know you personally, so I know you can be very supportive, but you have to be careful because if you are not getting that back in return, so it's not reciprocated, right. at what point do you stop being? And that goes with family too. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's not just yeah. friends. It goes with family too. So at what point do you back off, you think? I mean, because I, I, I really just don't know. Yeah. Well, for me, when someone, you know, curses me out or is... Oh. calls me ugly names or says yeah, that would really do it for me. things, then I realize at this point I'm going to back off because I haven't done anything wrong. Mm. So put it this way. I've been waiting for an apology ever since that I'll never get. And I get that. And look, there was no teens at the time. In mm. fact, me and my ex-husband have a great relationship. I mean, we co-parent together very well. Mm. There was no teens. There was no reason why she couldn't be friends with him mm. and, and his set of friends and me. I mean, there was just no reason. But so that was one. And right. the other one, which was is probably the most hurtful, was my best friend since junior high. I mean, we were best friends our entire life, mm. and um, godmother to her child. And you know, I've always been there for everything that she's went right. through. I mean, dropped everything and was there. But you know, once I got into my new marriage, I learned the things I did wrong in my first marriage. I right. mean, there's no doubt. I didn't put my husband first, you know, I, I mm. was, my friend called, she needed me. I was there, you know, mm. and I still do that, but not as much like my husband comes first and my children come right. first, comes first, but I'm always going to be there for my friends. But when I started saying, no, I can't do, or I can't, or, you know, and then I got involved in new things with work. Um, right. you know, a year ago I decided I'm do, I want to do this whole career change. I mean, I'm still in sales. I'm still a businesswoman, of course, but you know, I want to pursue acting. It's something that I used to do right. when I was younger. I was a performer, I was a dancer. And so I wanted to get back into all of that. Right. And my very first, and you are nonstop and I am nonstop like one audition after another. It's yeah, crazy. I'm starting to audition. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going really, really well. It's and you have crazy. an agent and I have an agent now. So all of this has transpired in a year. Right. And the way it all happened was you know, I decided, you know, I was, I was doing some pictures for a friend, doing some modeling. And then I got a call from someone to do, um, a music video. Mm -hmm. And at first I was like, okay, do you know how old I am? I'm in my forties. Like, <laughs> I'm not 20 something years old. And he's like, no, 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 this would be great. So I did that. And I just was so in love with the whole day. I, w I came back, I was glowing. My husband was like, okay, you're glowing. Like what went on today? Like, oh, wow. and, uh, and that's when I was like, you know what? I really want to do this. So from that point, that particular job that I had, you know, my friend, when I told her about it, she was just like, you know, and of course I got paid. It wasn't a whole right, lot, right. but she's like, that's it. I would have never done that. Oh, and okay. that, I was like, I would have done that for free. Are you kidding me? Exactly. This is so fun. I got to meet. Isn't that funny people. how people will put a price tag on pure joy? Yeah. 
you know, if you, if it brings you joy yeah. and it makes you happy, I mean, there are people that work in their hobbies every day. It doesn't bring them a penny, but they do it every day because they love it. Exactly. I mean, there's TV watchers, right? You know, people that I call TV watchers, those that sit on the sideline and watch other people become, be active because that's what you're doing as a TV watcher. Now, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I watch my law and order mm -hmm. and my housewives, but I'm talking about the TV watchers in a sense of the people that sit on the sofa and watch everyone else be active. They're the social media scrollers and literally the TV watchers instead of getting in the game. So when they see someone that they might be a little green over mm -hmm. actually in the game or in your case on the TV, mm -hmm. <laughs> then they become jealous and they take a step back. Mm -hmm. And I don't really understand that because when you could actually join forces with that friend and be supportive and come along and have that adventure, it, they want to sit back and just be jealous. And then they want to try to make you miserable and tell you uh -huh. and, and belittle what you're doing when there's nothing belittling about what you're doing that brings you joy. Right, right. Yeah, I didn't understand it. And so, yeah, what really was the icing on the cake was, I mean, just... You just, it's just a lot of different events without right. going into everything. My wedding, you know, things that were, I was starting to do. It was like I was, I had always put that person first and I, I always attended everything. And then when that person's not really, you know, like last minute right. of the day, you know, I shouldn't have to call my friend, my best friend the day before my birthday that we're supposed to do something to find out she's at an airport. It was like, mm. wait, what happened to our plans? When were you going to tell me? And she decided she's leaving to go on a vacation. Like, Wow. Best friends don't do that, you know? Right. Best friends don't, you know. I know some of the listeners are sitting here saying, I would have gotten rid of that person a long time yeah. ago. But that's because I know you and you have I'm such loyal. a loyalty. I'm but loyal. you've learned. I've learned. And the and the icing on the cake, I started saying up for myself. I mean, I mm. would let friends tell me whatever. And when I say whatever, it's I'm all about brutal honesty. That's fine. But when you start name calling me, saying you can't fix stupid Ooh. and oh yeah, ugly words. And tell me I'm self-centered and egotistical. That's where I draw the line. Like, I'm not going to let anybody talk to me Oh, like I've that. done drawing the line way before that then, girl. Right. So, you know, when I brought that, you know, I, I, I started speaking up for myself. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't go into the name calling with my friends. I've never done that. And, you know, but I will let them know what has hurt me and how my feelings are hurt. And, and basically, I expressed that. I said, look, I just feel like, you know, when's the last time you you know, picked up the phone and just called to see how that person was doing versus right. venting all your stuff or you, right. or you had coffee with someone and just said, so, you know, everybody wants to talk about their stuff and that's great, but it's got to be reciprocated. It's, right. it's a two way conversation. It's a two way friendship. Yeah, but it also you have to think about at what point does the, the, the Christianity in you mm -hmm. say, this is not how I'm going to be treated because this is not what I put out. Right. You know, I think that sometimes we, we get caught up and I call it in the housewives saga. Yes. Sometimes thank God I don't have any friends like that because they wouldn't last two <laughs> seconds in my right. world. You know me, which honestly I, I love the housewives and I watch it because I'm thankful every day that I don't have friends like that. <laughs> yeah, but you did, but you did. <laughs> you just, you I just learned just how to get rid of them. I mean, it just brings a whole new light of what's going on with Lisa Vanderpump right now. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, to be able to, to be bullied and attacked on and people come against you, mm -hmm. um, over the success that you have in your life and your happiness, it's just sad. Mm -hmm. So let's flip it a little bit and let's talk about new friends because mm -hmm. I know, you know, we're seven girls in Louisiana and they're, we're very clicky, right? You know, we were clicky in high school. We're clicky as adults. And I've even been told before from someone that moved here from Michigan that she had such a hard time. She's my old neighbor. She had such a hard time making friends because she said the girls in the South are extremely clicky and they mm -hmm. don't let newcomers in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I became friends with her because I thought how sad that, you know, I had some old friends over for like a little cocktail party and I invited the, my new friend from Michigan and, you know, I literally watched it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, she, other than me, there was really no one at the party that was actually giving her any kind of time or day to, mm -hmm. to chit chat with her. And I thought, these are my friends, right? What the heck is going on here? And she's, and she could feel it, you know? And it's really sad because we are a lot like that in the South. And mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about Louisiana girls, mm -hmm. you know, we're like that in, in Texas and 
and Georgia and Mississippi, it's just a Southern way that we grow up with people. And even when they go off and do things, we still keep people in that click and it's really hard to let newcomers in. Mm -hmm. Is it because you think, this is what I think. I think it's because um, a lot of us can be untrusting. Right. We think the old is trustworthy, which in fact, you just proved that to be not true. Right. And I know that I can prove that to be not true from right. some of my past friendships. So at what point do you feel like that it's okay to open the door to new friends? Because I know when we met, mm -hmm. you were very skeptical. Like, why does she want to be friends with me? You know, <laughs> and which really kind of threw me because I thought, well, why not? Uh -huh. You know, because I think sometimes in our minds that we, you know, we think that someone is above us or, or they're better than us. When in fact, we're all just women. And a lot of us are professional women, working women, trying to find our place and our purpose. Right. So what is it do you think it is about us right as southern women that we just are so freaking clicky you know I, and it's it's a shame because i think and I, i've kind of gotten myself out of the cliques yeah. i used to be there's a lot of mean girls things that still go on in mm -hmm. adults and it's really sad because we see these young girls act like mean girls but guess what they're getting it from their mama oh that's true you know and i that's something, I mean, I will be honest, I'm sure I did it when I was in high school, but as an adult, I have a real problem. Gosh, I sure hope I did it. Um, I think I probably did. I probably you know? did too. And I mean, I don't know for uh, an instance, I don't think I've ever, I was always friends with everybody. I was always kind to everybody, but I'm sure I would get on that mean girl train when I was with my friends. And I had some mean girl friends, mm. you know? So, you know, and I found like an adult, my adult life, there's still some mean girl mm -hmm. stuff and I don't like it. And so I've distanced myself from people who are here or belittling people for, about what they look like or their clothes or it seems like every time they get mad they want to call them they want to say all these ugly things about that person and and call them names and you know what my husband says they they may not be talking about you at the moment mm -hmm. or something may not be happening around them at the moment but because it's just not your turn right so right. you know if you're around someone that is constantly belittling or talking about someone else or you can see that jealousy right. or that, I call them haters, they, yeah. that haters, you know it's just not your turn. Oh, yeah. Well, or I'm sure it hap it's happening. It's just behind my back and I don't know. Right. You know? And, Eventually you will. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. That, and that's what happened in, in, this, right. in this case with, you know, my friend. But like, you know, I mean, I will, I will always love her. I will love her from afar. Right. Um, you know, I just, I know I will never get that apology. Unfortunately, that some people just won't apologize. I'll apologize all day long. Even I, I hate to say it, mm -hmm. even if I don't know what I did wrong, I'll just say, well, I'm, I apologize and I'm sorry I made you feel that way. Right. And that's all I ever really wanted, but I doubt I'm going to ever get it. Right. And it's just a shame because I'm like you. And I think that's why I was so drawn to you is because at the time in my life, I was looking for empowerment. Right. I felt like I was constantly supporting everyone else and their dreams and their divorces or remarriages or whatever. I was trying to always be supportive mm -hmm. of whatever it was they were going through. And I wasn't getting that in return from some people. Right. So when I met you and it was, you know, I'm new to the neighborhood. We, we lived mm -hmm. by each other. And then when we saw each other on Instagram, it was mm -hmm. snow day in Louisiana. Okay. So wait, let's tell everybody this story because <laughs> this is really funny. funny. <laughs> okay. So listen. If you don't think that you can't meet a good friend on Instagram, you are mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> so it's snowing in Louisiana, which is a rarity. Right. We got to tell this story. Absolute rarity. And it's white. I mean, it is white outside. So I'm taking a picture of my son out there playing in the snow, which I'll probably will never get again in his lifetime. And I put hashtag, I don't remember what it was, maybe diversion canal. Right. Because Lisa little, and I live on the water out here water. in South Louisiana. And you can look at hashtags and see, you know, if people are in the same restaurants as you or where they live or, or whatever. I didn't pay much attention to hashtags then, you know, mm -hmm. as, as we do now, but we put hashtags. She saw the hashtag, sent me a message about me living close to her because she was new. And basically long story short, we stayed in communication. She found out I was an author and a speaker. She bought my books. She was impressed by my books. <laughs> and what, within a few months we met and Lisa and I have been, we've been, she, listen, I, if, if I could get her to quit her job and be my assistant, which is ridiculous because she needs her own assistant. 
is <laughs> but I would do it. Yeah, she would do it, you know, because she when I go to, for TV shows or any of my speaking events, there's a handful of girls that I can count on and Lisa's one of them. She would literally like I'd, you know, blow my nose for me if I needed to and or carry my makeup bag um and which is a godsend. And and so and we have so much in common you know, with our professions, we're both business, strong business women, but we also have all of these outsides. So I just thought it was so cool. And that was what, a year and a half ago. Yeah. So we've been really good friends for a year and a half. So, you know, I'm telling you this story as if you're sitting there thinking while you're listening to this, I have a bunch of old friends that I want out of my life and I wish I could make new friends. I guess the moral to the story is go look up hashtags. Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> right, right. See who's in your neighborhood or, you know, who is, has the same interest as you right. and send them a message and meet for wine. You right. never know what's going to happen from that right. meeting. Right. Right. And look for like-minded people. And I think that's what was going yeah. on in my life. I yeah. was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm new to the neighborhood. I'm looking for some, you know, I, I still love my old friends, but I'm always right. open to meet new friends. And it's all, I've always networked with people and you just never right. know who you're going to click with. And so, yes, of course we just clicked. And I feel like God definitely put you in my life at the right time because I needed that push because that was right mm -hmm. when I started deciding I wanted to do pursue acting. And I started enroll, uh, enrolled in an acting class and you were like, okay, Lisa, what else do you need to do? So right. I need to land an agent. Well, what's stopping you from going to get an agent? You know? So, you know, I needed that. So yes. definitely you came in at a great time. I basically gave you my one-on-one -on -one coaching that yes. I do for free. Yes, exactly. And that never <laughs> happens. <laughs> You know, and then again, the book, when I, yeah. when I read that book, it was awesome. In fact, I had bought, I think I gave that to Christmas to my friends because you would talk oh, about overcoming right. adversity. Right. And so again, I'm trying to help my friends with right. their, you know, look, it's okay. Because I'm always about positive thinking. I just can't sit and listen. And I think this is what has happened with some friends. Mm -hmm. I can't listen to the people who all day long, they call me and they just whine and whine and whine about the same stuff, but they're not doing anything to make any changes. Right. You've got to do make some changes. I mean, we can... It's okay to whine. I whine sometimes. Sometimes I just need that, little, that therapy session with my right. friends. But at the end of the day, it's like it, you can't be going through the same thing for five years or six years or 10 years. At, yeah. at some point, you have to transition to something else. Or you at least you have know? to want to. You have to show some exactly. effort. Because I do, and I, and I, I get what you're saying, because I truly believe that some sometimes some women just want to sit in it. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that, that I'm cutting them down. I'm saying that... that they either don't know how to get out of the situation that they're in right. or they find comfort in the people that are surrounding them with attention. Right. So therefore they stay in that woe is me state. Right. So right. They, they're forced to move forward because they're getting the attention they need already mm -hmm. and they either don't know how or don't want to move mm -hmm. from there. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, and it's draining for the people. It, it's hard it is. for the people around them. And look, I was once that person. I was, I went through my tough times. You know, I may mm -hmm. go through more tough times later on. I don't know what's in store for me, but you know, at the end of the day, you, you, you gotta get yourself out. Yeah. Of but it. your mind is different. I know. You know, we've talked about this yeah. because five years ago you say, well, yeah, you know, you went through your divorce, you went all that and your mindset is different. So take that something really tragic happening to you now, or just a huge challenge or hurdle now. Mm -hmm. The mindset where you are and where I am now is totally different. I can handle, well, I always say I can handle devastation. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I'm not going to cry and have a breakdown, but it's a matter of whether I'm going to wake up the next day and have a breakthrough. Right. And I know that you're not going to top the devastation that I had 12 years ago on mm -hmm. July 12th. And so no matter what happens in my life, mm -hmm. you just can't top that. Mm -hmm. So I know whatever breakdown I'm going to have in the morning, there's a breakthrough. Right. And I, in order for you to be able to move on from that, you have to have that core group of people. Now, don't get me wrong. You have to be happy with yourself, right. be able to set yourself on a right path. Don't ever put your happiness and your destination in someone right. or something. Right. However, you know, I always preach and it's in my book, Strong Women, that you are the sum of the five people you surround yourself with. Yes. And I didn't come up with that quote. Okay. Right. But I do quote that quote mm -hmm. over and over because I truly believe the people you surround yourself with, you are the sum of them. And if you don't know who you are or why you do the things you do, if you look at the people around you, 
you can look in the mirror and you'll know exactly why you respond to situations the way mm -hmm. you do, why you lash out, why you have anger issues, right. why you're a gossiper or a hater or you're miserable mm -hmm. because everyone in your circle is that way. Right. And the opposite can be true is if you surround yourself with like-minded women that are very positive and optimistic and allow you to have a breakdown as right. long as you pick yourself back up exactly. and have a breakthrough, then you'll start looking in the mirror going, wow, I don't know where this strength comes from. Right. My strength comes from God, mm -hmm. but God has implanted that faithfulness and that positivity in me mm -hmm. that I have a mindset for whatever's happened and any rejection, people's rejection. I talked about that yesterday. Right. People's rejection is God's protection. Right. So if you're feeling rejected by someone or something, mm -hmm. know that you're being protected for, from that actual person or that thing, because right. you have a breakthrough and something bigger for you. Right. Yeah. Right. I got deep right there for a second. No, and I, I love that because that's how I feel, you know? Yeah. And so as people, like I said, as people exited my life and it wasn't my, actually they chose to exit. Right. I never said, Hey, I don't want to be your friend anymore. I never said that they decided, you know, to unfollow me. And Facebook. that was God's protection. That they, rejection. Right, they decided right. to not call me, not, you know, not try to right. work through our conversation that we were having. So, and I didn't, all I can think of is what did I do? Let's see. Hmm. I got remarried and I decided I wanted to pursue acting. What is so bad about that? You know, oh, like, that, just, right, right there. That's two things to bring the haters out of the you know, woodwork, and you like, know? And it's so weird because like you were saying too, new people have come into my life. I met some really good friends through, through acting. Mm -hmm. um, we are all supportive of one another. We um, congratulate each other. We are our biggest cheerleaders. When right. somebody gets something, we're like all for them. We're not jealous because they got it and we didn't get anything. Right. Yet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm starting to meet new people that are very supportive in whatever you do. And it's just hurtful because I just can't believe old friends, people mm -hmm. that you've known your whole life and you know, you've loved your whole life. Why wouldn't they want to support you right. in something that's making you happy? Like it exactly. just doesn't make any sense. And but, two, um, and you can grow from that because mm -hmm. you're good friends with my best friend, right? And I absolutely adore Trisha. Yes, and and, yes. and so like, it's well, it's not Trisha? just the friendship that one friendship. It's grown with many, right? You know, I've I met um, Tiffany Hendra three years ago. Was it been three years? Oh my gosh, and. She's wonderful and mm -hmm. she can bring some haters out of the woodwork now. You know, she was on the Housewives of Real Housewives of Dallas season one, opted not to do season two because she couldn't stand all of, you know, what, what was going on, all of that, that bad, the bad vibes and, right. and, and all of the hate and the negativity. She couldn't stand that. And when Tiffany and I met, it was at just a really good time mm -hmm. in our lives that um, we understood each other. Um, she later, like within a few weeks, had a huge loss in her life. And then within a few months later, had another huge loss in her life. And I was that person in her life that could talk to her about grief. Mm -hmm. And, and so she, you know, she got that from me. And what I got from her was being able to expand some of my purpose dreams that I had that I felt like God was leading me towards. And through that, I met a lot of her friends mm -hmm. that have become my friends. And then I've met their friends right? and they've become my friends. And it's just huge. It's just kind of snowballed yeah. into a lot of new friendships. Right. Now I have, um, some old friends that I hold really dear one being my friend since I was 15 years old. And, um, she, McGann's been there for me when my son died, she was there for me. I mean, she, when I was in pageants growing up, she was the friend that would come and carry my trophies off the stage mm -hmm. and smile and be happy to do it. Now yes. that's a friend, that is. right? Yes. When my son died, um, I, she was right there by my side. Like she was my personal assistant, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that I ate and making sure everything went smoothly. And, and she will always be dear to my heart, but she's a supporter, right? She's a supporter and she's a good friend and she wants the best for me. Right. And it's really hard to have that in old friends and new. So you have to be really open. Right. You it's have to true. be really open. So when I say open, be an accepting of people in your lives, but mm -hmm. also watching and making sure that they have your best interest at heart. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I know, and I guess my, my next oldest friend would be Trisha. Yeah, she's and a sweetheart. And she is a sweetheart. And, you know, when she came into my life way back when, she was just like this, I call it a positive ray of sunshine. Yes, she, she is. Was all, and, you, and you know, yeah. you know her. So, and she has been. And that's one thing she has proven to me. So I have always been loyal to her. Mm -hmm. And if anybody talks bad about her or, or says anything negative, I'm like in attack mode because right. she, for me, she has proven time and time again that she's been a true friend she's been supportive she's been there for everything and you know i right. but i'm like that with anybody if anybody t tries to talk bad about any of my friends it's like wait you know hold up right you know? so well and see and i think that's really important what you said that you go into attack mode and you're there because i know um i've had this way back uh, before where you know, an old friend could have supported me in a situation, but instead she remained silent. And that's what she felt like she was supporting was coming back and telling me about the conversation. Mm -hmm. That's not being supportive. Supportive is saying, Hey, we're going to shut this down. She's not here to right. defend herself because I believe you've got this wrong. Being silent and coming and telling me about the conversation to go take up for myself after the fact is not being supportive. No. So for those that are listening, if you're a true friend, <laughs> it's not going back and telling them that's called gossiping, going back and telling them about a conversation. What you do as a true friend is you stand up and say, listen, what we're not going to do is talk about my friend while she's not here because you don't know what you're talking about. Right. And, and move on from there. You don't have to cuss anyone out and you don't have to, you know, tick anyone off. You can just simply shut it down and say, this is not right. This conversation is not right. And we're going to stop it right here. Right. You know, Yeah. now before we go off, cause I know you got to go, you have an audition today. So I want you to read something. You wrote yes. something, um, after you were going through this transition and this transformation here, um, from your old friend, you wrote something and is it called transformation? Well, it's actually something I saw. Okay. And so I just basically copied it and I put it on my Instagram because it just, I, it was totally me and what I was going through at that yes, time. Yes, but it's good. So I and want I you to read it. that before, before we go off and share that with it's everybody. It's actually called shifting. Cool. So basically as you are shifting, you will begin to realize that you are not the same person that you used to be. The things that you used to tolerate have become intolerable. When you once remain quiet, you find your voice and speak your truth. Where you once battled and argued, you are now choosing to remain silent. You are beginning to understand the value of your voice, and there are some situations that no longer deserve your time, energy, and focus. Real transformation requires real honesty. If you want to move forward, you have to get real with yourself. I love that. Me too. All right, Lisa, your career is taking off. And so I want people to start following you um, because you've got a lot of cool things coming up in film and TV. So where can people find you? So I'm on Instagram as Lisa Marie Peranio. That's P-E-R-A-N-I-O. And I just launched my website. It, you can find me at the Lisa Peranio. Is it the Lisa Marie Perino? Oh, yes, it's the Lisa. It's Mar so brand new. She has no idea what her <laughs> <Sorry>. website is. <laughs> it's the Lisa Marie Perino. Cool. Y'all make sure you follow Lisa. She has a lot of cool stuff coming up. And I appreciate you joining me here. I have some great guests, great guests that are coming up in the next few weeks. And remember, I want you to make sure you keep your inspiration and your empowerment tank full Keep your faith in God. And as I always say, step out of your comfort zone and try something you've never tried before. You never know where it might go.